Morning. I've actually got nothing to do today. My car's in for a repair to have an oil leak done. So I'm just going through some photos that I haven't edited from Thailand yet. And I've come across some bird photos that are quite um, underexposed. Well, they're kind of more or less right, but the problem is they're kind of like a silhouette. Um, and I'm doing a bit of recovery. I've already done a couple of them, but I thought I'd take this opportunity and um, show you how I do it. So not much uh, waffling on at this point, but I'll uh, show you my editing process. Okay, so this is the photo I'm trying to recover. It's of a yellow vented bauble, which was taken in Thailand and Koh Chang. I didn't see many of this kind, they were just the yellow ones normally. So very few photos, I'm just trying to salvage if I can. So the first thing I'll do is I'll crop. And I'm gonna crop it into like a square, I think. There's a lot of distraction in the sides, which I don't really want in the photo. So I'm gonna cut out as much of this as I can for now. Try and place it somewhere in the middle like that. I think that'll do. Um, I'm going to increase the shadows to round about there to start me off and maybe change the temperature I might make it a little bit warmer um, maybe I'm going to crop it in a little bit more because I don't like this distraction on the side so just crop it in a little tiny bit more um, so what I'm going to do at this point is I'm just going to Take it over to Photoshop, right click and edit in Photoshop. And I'm what I want to get my words out. What I want to try and do is I want to try and clean up some of this rubbish around here and um, make it a little bit less distracting. So I'm going to duplicate the layer and let's get rid of as much of this as we can. Uh, there's various different ways of getting rid of it, but what I'm going to do for this one is I'm just going to use a clone tool, increase the size of the brush. You can do that on the keyboard by, I think it's the bracket button, or you can go to the top image and change the brush size there when you click on this icon. So what you want to do is you want to get the cursor close to where you want to remove and press Alt and click the mouse button on the left and that samples from there when you bring it down it keeps that color I'm going to keep the opacity at 100 on this and I always nearly always use my brush at the softest setting by turning it all the way to the left and I'm just going to paint over them I want to get rid of all of this so I'm going to use the same technique to get rid of all this and I'm going to clone in part of this branch down to here to make it kind of look as though it's all natural or as natural as I can make it and I'll just get rid of the same over here so I want to take this branch and bring it down so I need to kind of keep the, the straightness of the branch the same going down. So that's more or less something like there. So again, press the cursor over the branch, press the Alt button and left mouse click and then bring it down to where I want it to kind of start. Do that a couple of times because the branch doesn't go straight. We'll curve it in a little bit um, here. It hasn't got to be perfect for this part because it's not really part of the photo that you're really going to be concentrating on. If it kind of bends off, you kind of need to straighten it out. So just make your brush a little bit smaller, then you can kind of re bend the branch, if you know what I mean. 
any bits that go a little off just or go a little soft on the corners just um, lower the brush size and you can kind of shape it a little bit more so let's just clean up the edges make the brush a lot smaller and what we're going to do now is just going to zoom in and see where it looks a bit weird you'll notice that some of the actual branch detail has gone but again use the clone brush sample some that's got pattern on just bring it down I'll do for that bit so we've kind of gone from that to that probably going to add a little bit more texture off there let's just keep going over it until it kind of looks real now for this I am going to increase the hardness Because I do want the edges of the tree to look fairly sharp. This actual photo is not going to win any awards, so I'm not going to take my time too much on it because I'm just concentrating on the bird, really. I don't think anyone's going to be looking at is the tree trunk perfect? Doing right in um, and just tidy up the edges a little bit more. Yeah. I want to do for now, I think. I think I'll keep the one at the top. I'm not too bothered about that. Well, in fact, no, I'll get rid of some of it. Lower the hardness of the brush again. then just harden it again for this kind of bit here. I just want it to kind of look straight at the edges. Once I've done that, I want to flatten the layer, flatten the two layers. So I click on the background layer, right click, flatten image, and then I'm going to duplicate the image again. You don't have to do that. You can keep them all going so you can go back, but I like to kind of flatten them once I know I've kind of finished for that for that part. So once I've flattened it, I want to get rid of the blue kind of tint that's in the white of the face. So I'm going to click on the icon at the bottom, which is the adjustments. Uh, it's create new filler adjustments layer. So I'm going to click on that and go to hue and saturation. First thing I want to do is I only want it to affect the layer underneath. So if I click on the hue and saturation layer, press the alt button and then press the left mouse button, you'll get an arrow point down. And what that does, the arrow there, it means that it's only affecting that layer. So with the hue and saturation, what I want to do is I want to pick the colors and you can use it by this hand mark here. And I want to pick the kind of the blues in the white here so if I click on that and then just bring saturation down because it was too blue and maybe brighten it a little bit and if I turn that on and off you can see the blue is kind of gone what that's done is it took the blue tint away from everywhere now if I just wanted the blue kept everywhere else what I would do then is on the background layer, I create a mask, a background mask. White reveals, black conceals, so that's showing everything. By pressing Control and I, it turns the background layer to black, so nothing's showing. 
So then I get a pen, sorry, the brush tool, and change the brush color to white, and then just paint where I want my last adjustment to be, well, to come into place, which is there. So you can see on the background copy here, the white little dot shows the hue and saturation is only taking effect on that white dot. But for this, I can take the whole lot of the blue out completely because I'm not that bothered and I don't like blues. So once I've done that, again, what I'll do is I'll flatten the image. Um, and at this point, I will then run it through Topaz Denoise. As I've said before, it shows you all of the settings, but I always use low light and I decrease the enhanced sharpness and click apply. Okay, so that's took all the noise out of the image now. So duplicate the layer again, and then I'm just going to sharpen up the little few little areas that I want sharpened, which is the eye, the beak. So click the sharpen tool, which is the triangle few little clicks over some areas that I want sharpened that I think um, flatten the flatten it again what I will try is after I've duplicated the layer again I'm going to go to image auto tone which brightens it right up which is way too much so I'm going to lower the opacity right down like 15% and I think that's all I'm going to do in Photoshop for now I may come back so once I've done that back up to file and save and that will save that so when you go back to Lightroom now all your adjustments will come back you can use Camera Raw in Photoshop to make any of these adjustments but I like to come into Lightroom it's just I don't know it's just the way I do it but you can all do that in Photoshop. So what I'm going to try and do now is I just want to try and bring the shadows up a little bit more and decrease the highlights and the contrast a little down a little bit. A little bright, so I'm going to decrease the vibrance. Just touch the clarity and the texture. Not too much because I've cropped the image that much already. I don't want to bring some of this noise back. Um, I think the background is a little too bright. So I'm going to go to the masking tool. Select background. Once that's selected, I'm just going to lower the exposure just a little bit. Maybe take some of the highlights out there. Um, I think that's about it. I may go back into, I may try increasing the whites a little bit. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Um, and try the dehaze. I never go too much because I've cropped it in. And I find the more work you do when it's a cropped in image, the more it can kind of look fake. Um, I can see a little bit dark here. And what I might try to do is just to highlight and brighten up some of the colors around the bird just to make it pop a little bit more. So right click, editing, Adobe Photoshop, duplicate the layer, then use the clone tool again. Just paint out this little bit of shadow here. And then I'm going to get the brush tool This icon will change to whatever you last used it as I last used the sponge tool, so that's why it's showing as the sponge. So click on the dodge, um, click on the mid tones, and it lower the exposure right down. I'm just going to tap over some areas that I just want brightening up just a little bit. Don't want to go too far. The sponge tool actually t removes the color from parts of the image. So I know there's a little bit of blue in these 
legs. I'm just going to go over the sponge tool and it removes any color, kind of color around there. Um, and try just touching on the whites in case there are slight tints of blue left. I think there's like a bit of a reflection of blue in the eye and I want to kind of just make that pop a little bit. So I'll go to the dodge tool. Use the bracket to make it roughly the same size as the hot the eye. Go into mid tones, keep the exposure low. And just give that a little click or two, and it might bring a little bit more detail out on the eye. Yeah, I think that's it. So file save back into Lightroom, and uh, obviously there's the before and there's the after. As I said, it's not going to win any awards, but I've kind of recovered that photo a little bit. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope it's uh, been helped to someone or I may have given you a couple of tips that you didn't know. As I've said before, I'm no expert in Photoshop or Lightroom. I just fumble my way through. But I might have passed on something that you didn't know. So until next time, thanks for watching.